Good morning and good afternoon, it's Eric Thor here, the scourge of the objective personality community as some would call me. No, jokes aside, I wanna say this is gonna be my final review, my final verdict on objective personality. Probably I'm gonna revisit this later on in the future and I'm gonna make a new video, but this is my final summary of my series on objective personality. Now. <laughs> I want to start off by saying I'm going to review the model based on how well I personally like it. Yeah, deal with it, I'm a person with opinions. And third, how well I think the model serves to benefit personal growth and personal development. So yeah, I'm going to be discussing the model from a theoretical point of view, what I think it does well and what I think it could do better. So you're probably gonna like some things and disagree with other things. Now, I want to start off by saying thank you to the Objective Personality community because I feel that the Objective Personality community on the whole has been really positive and really welcoming and really open-minded. So I truly appreciate you all for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. I completely understand that it's uncomfortable, even difficult to hear an outsider come in and discuss your model, a model that you've been studying for years and to have opinions on it. I mean, I can never speak to be an expert on objective personality. I've not spent the total amount of hours that you have reviewing their model and footage. I know people have been in that community for years analyzing and trying to understand it. So what I can offer you is an outsider's point of view. I can share how I think objective personality relates to and connects to other models. I can discuss how I have experienced their definitions as a person coming from the outside with an awareness of Carl Jung, the Jungian functions and the different systems and practices out there. So yeah, let's get on with the review. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. So first of all, I want to start off by reviewing the general community around objective personality. And I want to start off by hitting a positive note. I think that the objective personality community is one of the most intelligent and intellectual and interesting communities out there. Uh, I really appreciate the material they share and how they engage in and study psychology and I appreciate them for trying to honor the scientific approach and I appreciate them for taking time to really reflect on the deeper psychological aspects of type. So I think I get a lot from being a member of that community and from learning from what they have to say. So I truly appreciate it for being there. Of course, there were things I found a bit unsettling and troubling. I noticed that some members of the objective personality community were quite prone to stereotyping and a lot of them uh, engaged in gatekeeping and, and other, you could say, uh, immature practices uh, to guard the model. So I found that some people were quick to say, oh, Eric Thor is just an ENTP troll because that's how they type me. Uh, and therefore his argument is invalid. And I want you to apply and understand that any person can have a thought or appear experience and all types have valid opinions and ways of looking at types. So I don't want to see people derail or use the objective personality model in a stereotypical or shallow or superficial way. I don't think that's what Dave or Shannon intended and I don't think that's what they want for you. So I think people should really reflect on that. So just think about stereotypes, how easy they are to use, but how problematic they are and how limiting they are. Because I can tell you, I'm far from an ENTP troll. I'm here to give a serious perspective and I'm trying my best to really take the time to listen and to hear everyone's viewpoints and to learn from you all. So to round off, I'm gonna score the objective personality community a four out of five. Great community, enjoyed my stay, would definitely come back. <laughs> now, moving on to the animals. Yeah, the animals. I think the animals are probably the best part of objective personality. Uh, that means I truly appreciate how they use the animals to understand and analyze personal uh, personality type. That means I found that the uh, the animals are probably the most popular and the most well-used aspect of their model. Consume, blast, sleep and play are truly elegant and easy to use concepts that really get people thinking about their personal life, their personal habits and their lifestyle. So I think this is probably 
the part of their theory that I like and appreciate the most. And now I can say honestly, of course, there are differences in how I would interpret the animals and how I would use them. I see the animals more as subtypes. I don't see them as fixed in the same sense that the uh, objective personality might. Uh, but on the whole, I have to score the model and the concepts uh, based on how I think it is as a whole. And therefore, I'm going to give it five out of five call youngs. Great concept. Great done. Now, I want to move on to something that I like less, and that is uh, the cognitive function approach. Now, I think that objective personality is far more a, a dichotomy model. That means it works from the base building blocks of type, introversion, extroversion, intuition, sensing. That means objective personality does a great job when analyzing the base aspect of type. However, the cognitive function theory is very limited. What I mean with that is that there is not a lot of cognitive function theory. That means while objective personality will reference cognitive functions like introverted intuition or extroverted sensing, they will rarely uh, discuss on a theoretical level what introverted intuition is or how it is a cognitive function, how it has anything to do with cognition, thinking or mental process. Instead, what they will do is it will they will say introverted intuition is introversion plus intuition. And so that's something I do struggle with and something I think needs more work. I definitely think it's possible to develop an objective personality cognitive function theory. And I really want to encourage people to do that. But at the moment, it does not exist. And therefore, I'm going to give this one out of five Carl Jung's. Yes, Carl Jung would not be happy with this. Now, uh, the sexual models. Um, honestly, the sexual models are another part of their theory I think needs more work. Sorry to say, the sexual models I think have little to do with gender, and so I find the terms feminine and masculine very problematic. I don't feel that objective personality has a good job, done a good job of explaining how this relates to gender, or <laughs> things like that. And so I think it works better as a model on assertiveness or turbulence. And so I think that's what they should do. They should rebrand it as a way of discussing whether functions are assertive or turbulent. And I think that would be a very positive change. However, that is not the case at the moment. And I also see that this model needs more work. I see this uh, the feminine and sexual models uh, to be very limited in use. Like when I see people post about animals all the time, I don't really see people reference the feminine or masculine aspects of the theory as much. And more often when they do, they do so in a critical manner. Meaning people have difficulties understanding how to use this concept for personal growth or personal development and don't really know how to take or deal with this. So I'm gonna say two out of five we call Youngs. It's an interesting concept, and so I have to give them credit for it. And I think there might be something there, but I think it needs a new approach and a new perspective. Finally, the dichotomies. And like I said, the dichotomies are the strength of objective personality. They're really easy to use, they're really simple to define, and they're pretty easy to start using for typing very quickly. And I like the Lego building block model of objective personality, how they will take different coins and then they will just put them together and say, hey, you can take this coin and this coin and this coin and put them all together to create a type. And so it's very simple, it's very straightforward, very easy to use. And I think for the most part, the definitions work on their own ground and have merit. So I'm gonna rate this five out of five. Great work uh, and keep up. <laughs> this part of the model uh, is really good. So, um, the model itself. Um, I would say, honestly, 512 types is too big of an undertaking. I think the sample sizes for each individual type is very limited, and I think uh, Objective Personality has created a giant of the system. A system that is too big for them to handle and I would say they have to start prioritizing and I would say they should start prioritizing by maybe considering dropping the sexual models and focusing on the other aspects of type so uh, focus the research on uh, improving and strengthening what you already have and work on your strengths so work on the animals and work on the things that are really working for you like the dichotomies and maybe start uh, expanding to and improving on the cognitive function part of your theory uh, but make some priorities maybe there is something to the sexual models but I think 
you are spreading yourself too thin, trying to juggle and use too many concepts. And I think what ends up happening in the great danger of 512 types is you create kind of a smorgasbord of type. And that means people can choose to identify with any individual coin and anything can become anything. So uh, it makes it hard to, and it diminishes the strength of the general system because how do you know it's uh, consume sleep and how do you know it's not feminine consume? And how do you make sure that you're not misattributing or confusing different parts of the coins with one another? How do you separate between them and make sure that people don't uh, confuse them? That's a problem and I think it's something they need to work on. So I'm gonna say on the level of the coins, there, there's more work to be done. And then finally, I wanna make a point about static versus dynamic groupings. So what I wanna discuss is that some coins might be static. That means some parts of type might certainly be fixed, but other parts might be more fluid. It's possible, for example, that the animals are more related to subtypes. What I wanna say is it's possible that a person might change their animal stacking. That means it might be possible to go from a consume, play, sleep, blast type to a consume, sleep, play, blast type. It's possible that these things might change over time and due to the result of personal development. Is a savior, savior a second slot savior and second, a third slot demon, like are these things uh, going to be static or are they gonna be changeable? That's something I think they have to think about. Not everything about type is permanent. We know there is behavior that people can change and we know that there are values and things that are more permanent to people. So I would like a discussion on that. Then um, I wanna discuss um, the typing method. And I wanna give the typing method four out of five youngs because I do believe that the operator model is something positive and something really important. So I appreciate that they're taking the time to create a model that multiple operators can use. And I like that they're working to make sure that all operators use the model the same way to avoid ambiguity. So great work on that and keep up the work on that. I do want to say I don't think that this model makes the model objective because two people can be trained to have the same subjective bias. So it's not enough to make it a scientific approach to type, and I don't think it should be sold as such, but it's certainly a way to make it more uh, linear and more measurable, and that's certainly a step forward. So what they could do to really improve their typing method is work more with the client. That means perhaps run surveys, ask people to give their big five results with you or share some kind of data or objective feedback so that you can cross-reference that to how you type people. Now, obviously it's not always gonna be the same and people are not always gonna be correct, but it's interesting to check if what you say and what you think about that person can uh, be tracked in some objective way. At the moment, that's not happening. So I'm gonna say four out of five could be better, but certainly a great step forward. Then we have the ethics part of objective personality. And this is where I feel objective personality makes its biggest shortcoming. I think when objective personality started, it started out in a very unethical and dangerous way, which is also why I avoided doing this series for such a long time. I've only changed this matter in the uh, last months because I've seen that they have made a lot of steps to improve and they have become a lot more humble and a lot more modest and a lot more open-minded. What I see now is that they are working to uh, change their approach to how they communicate type and how they communicate their system. So from starting out saying that all other models are pseudoscience, we are a science, we are objective, uh, we are experts, we know everything, uh, we are 100% accurate on typing and we know your best and you don't know yourself. And uh, nowadays they are going to, this is just our best guess. This is just where we are starting out right now. We are still working on the base of our model. We are nowhere near being a science or something objective yet. We are trying our best to do the, get the data and to work from a bottom up way. And we expect it will take many years before we are ready to, uh, put forward our findings in a more objective way. So I'm seeing that they're moving to become more and more ethical and I appreciate that. So I wanna say um, they still have a lot of work to be done and I think most of the time what I'm seeing is first, it is 
unethical marketing to call the system objective when it isn't. It's truly false marketing and it creates a bad first impression of the system. Second, it often discusses personality types in a negative and derogatory manner, focusing on the weaknesses and problems of each type. And so I find a lot of time how they talk about types is very negative and very focused on the issues they see with different types. And I think they need to uh, make sure that they can see the full scope of a person because a person is both their strengths and their weaknesses. So we have to discuss both what a person is good at and what they struggle might struggle with. And I also don't think we should uh, teach that the uh, struggles or weaknesses of a personality type are inherent or fixed. I want to make sure people know that they can work on themselves and they can better themselves and they can uh, learn from what they need to work on. So I think they need to work on that part. So um, I would still say there's work to be done here and I Hope that they can take more steps forward here. And for now, I'm just going to leave it at a two out of five rating. And that leaves us to the final summary. And I'm going to say at the moment, the way I treat objective personality is as a three out of five model. And that's really good. It's really good for a new model that has only been around for a few years, while others have been working on their concepts for decades. Objective personality is putting forward something new and they're taking on a really big undertaking. 512 types with so many different coins and with so many new concepts, that's a massive undertaking. So I can completely understand that they've spread themselves really thin and they are uh, really trying to uh, push themselves and push boundaries and work as much as possible. <laughs> and so I think they, there is a lot of merit and of pot potential to their model. And I think if they work on their ethical aspects of how they advance type, and if they keep working on the theoretical aspects of their model, and if they start prioritizing better, I think they can really take this step forward and make the model to something really positive for people. I completely forgot to say this, but actually the objective personality manner of typing using saviors and demons is amazing. I really like that they use saviors and demons to type, and I see clear parallels to what I talk about when I talk about the personality type in flow versus stress. So I think they are really on track here and I really appreciate them for taking and adding that part to their model. Five out of five youngs. Tidal waves are also another amazing addition to their system and I also agree with them that the more you pile up and ignite your stressors, the more they are gonna become a massive weight on you or a tidal wave threatening to swallow you. So. Definitely really useful for personal growth purposes. Really great concept. Really like that part of objective personality. Now I want to say, how have you experienced objective personality? How do you feel about the model? What do you like about it and what do you dislike about it? Feel free to let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And I hope to see you all in the next video.